about it, right? And, uh, I remember the day after spring break, uh, I walk into one of my classes and there was these two kids that were debating whether Cancun or Cabo was better to snore cocaine in, right? And uh, this girl I was talking to at the time, she was like telling me about, about going to Vancouver and going to Seattle and doing all this cool shit over there. And then she was like, hey, Nalawi, what'd you do during spring break? I was like, I did mushrooms in my backyard. <laughs> that trip cost $17. Like, <laughs> I'll give it all your first class bullshit. Uh, another thing I hate about that school was like all the cases of cultural appropriation. I'd always see, right? I remember one time I was chilling at this house party and I see this white dude walking. He has cornrows and he's wearing his dashiki. Yeah, I didn't fuck with that at all. Like this guy, he's not black, he's not African. Like he just doesn't get to wear my heritage like that. Like fuck that dude. Like that shit made me so angry. I set my craft beer down on the table next to me. <laughs> out of my vans and uh, as soon as I got up I was like is it really worth stretching out my skinny jeans just to fuck this dude up? <laughs> nah. <laughs> just go home and listen to some Wu-Tang, you know? <laughs> I can't blame him. He was just trying to be woke, right? Like, like I have like a lot of those like woke white friends, like those white friends who can't help but try to prove that they're not racist and you're like I'm hanging out with you. Didn't assume so, right? Uh, <laughs> Like two days ago, I go to my friend's house for the first time, and as soon as I walk in, he just conveniently has a 2015 BET Hip Hop Awards playing on his TV. And like immediately, he's like trying to like justify, like explain himself, right? And he's like, yeah, man, I just feel like Kendrick Lamar. So I think I talk that cop car. It was like this really powerful symbol for police brutality in America, you know? I was getting like mad uncomfortable, like crazy uncomfortable. So I was like, hey man, you got anything else we can watch? And he was like, hey yo, check it. My DVR is lit, fam, right? And he just started. <laughs> He just started showing me all these TV shows he's had recorded over the years, but the weird thing was like, it was just TV shows with just black people in it, right? It was like, uh, The Fresh Prince, uh, Empire, uh, Moesha, uh, The News. I was like, hey man, you got anything like Game of Thrones? And he's like, I got The Wire. I was like, oh fuck yes, let's watch that, hell yeah. I don't know, I'm on season two. It's so the opposite though, like, I, know, I have a cousin who goes to UVA, University of Virginia, in Charlottesville. Uh, some people went there, all right. Uh, yeah, and I don't know if you guys remember, but last August some terrible shit went down there, right? And uh, when I first heard the news, I was freaking the fuck out because he's like a freshman in the dorms and like he's an only child, so I kind of like act like his little brother or his older brother in the family. So uh, that first thing in the morning when I heard the news, I called him up, right, like at 6 a.m. I was like, "Hey man, you good?" And he said, uh, "He said, uh, what happened?" And I said, there were a bunch of fucking neo-Nazis on your college campus carrying tiki torches and screaming really hateful shit about like women, gays, Jews, minorities. Then he said, uh, he said, 
Oh, word. <laughs> I was like, yeah, man, I'm dead fucking serious. Once again, are you good? And he was like, I don't know, nigga. I was asleep, and I hung up the phone. <laughs> this motherfucker slept through a goddamn race riot. Like, do you know how fucking bad I want to be in one of those? That's like a fucking white woman sleeping through a fucking farmer's market or some shit. Like, I don't even you know. Why don't white crime is my pumpkin spice latte, you know? Like, it's easy, you know? Gotta see that one. <laughs> Fucking stupid. Uh, if you can tell by looking at me, my dad voted for Obama twice. Um, yeah, and uh, when he did, he told me, he, I was about to go to high school, and he was like, telling me, he was like, hey, I only voted for, not only, but mainly voted for him so that you would know, even though you're black in America, even though, you know, me and your mom are immigrants, like, you can truly do anything in this world. Like, it was supposed to be like this, like, inspiration, like, motivational thing for me. But I don't know about you guys, I've never found Obama, like, a very inspirational person. Because this guy, he went to both Columbia and Harvard, made out of the south side of Chicago, did over 10 years of public service, like, he's a way better person than I will ever be. Like, he deserved that job. That's why I kind of like Trump a little bit. Because <laughs> that guy did not deserve that job. <laughs> like, let's look at his resume. Let's look at his resume. No political experience. Seduces women like a goddamn Street Fighter character. He's <laughs> about to start World War III with North Korea on fucking Twitter. And is still president of the United States of America. Like, I look at that guy, I'm like, oh shit, I could really do anything. Wow. All right, that's my time. Bye. Up, down, turn around, pick a bale of cotton. Up, down, turn around, pick a bale of day. Up, down, turn around, pick a bale of cotton. Up, down, this is my time. I'm ready to sacrifice. I'm ready to do what's necessary. Do you know why? Rick needs me. He's always going to be there for me. Whatever the case may be. Hell, I'll put on some chain metal for this motherfucker. Oh fuck, I think I left the alarm on. Oh, look who it is. Mr. Journey to the Center of the Earth down here in a bear cave. Hey, Glenn. What are you, storing nuts for the winter? No, I'm just doing a little bit of work on your computer here. We realize that you're working on my computer, right? Uh, but there's probably nothing wrong with it. I'd... Yeah, no. Uh, it runs like a dream. Rick sent me in here just to... Place a couple restrictions on your Wi-Fi. Install Carmen San Diego where I don't have to flip the I disc am over. I'm not putting any games on your computer. I love geography. Listen, do you seem like you need some more natural energy? I got an idea. Send me that whole account list. I'm not giving you the email list. If that's... we had everyone social look. and you clicked all these boxes. Well, that's fine. You well, can't. Oh look, click. they're all clicked. And you just press oh, that. God. The fuck did you just send? Uh, guess who's getting his bonus direct deposited? No oh, hard checks, Captain. This is the future. Hey, uh, why don't I just get a spam email from our company oh. account for generic Adderall? Uh, Tom, did you do this? I have to go make sure these networks are printed. What is this email? Glenn Carlisle, the TJ Maxx of prescription drugs. Look, Canada's been doing this for years, and you seem... We haven't hung out a lot. We don't hang out. Well, that's a problem. Let's you and I go play hooky. I got a line on some $5 draft Michelob Ultras, big mug. We'll sit at the bar and we'll talk about what's going on with you. <sighs> I miss my family. Rick actually told me not to talk Restrictions? To you, you know, Tim, I'm glad you're here. I'm my very... name is Tom. Oh. Well, agree to disagree. Look, uh, I'm a big fan of television too, but all of these My Two Dads downloads are... Well, Greg Effigan and Riser really did something there. And, you know, Effigan never worked again, which I think is crazy. And Riser, we should have bought stock. I, I'm a really positive person. I talk in a very upbeat, sing-song way. And the other day I had a friend go, you know what you sound like? I know what it is. You talk like a 1930s Broadway musical star. <laughs> and I just looked at her and said, well, gee golly, Missy. Took a couple of poppers, married a gay guy, and then just 23 skadood out of there. <laughs> just, you know, the greatest time to be alive. <laughs> and everybody lived in secret, secret shame. Wow. 
I moved here and I, you know, I did it because you know what they say. If you can dog walk here, you can dog walk anywhere. It's a very easy job. Pretty much anybody can do it. Uh, I really love living here though. It's a very fashion forward city, you guys. You are all looking good. I like it. Everybody's cuffing their jeans, tucking their shirts on, wearing very sturdy shoes at all times. It's like we're all ready to get on a boat and be a first mate somewhere. You know, where do you need me? I'll be there in five. But uh, it's inspired me to get into fashion. Um, I myself now work at a baby's boutique. Thank you so much. A baby's clothing boutique. And I gotta tell you guys, you haven't lived until you've told a nine month old they look dumpy in skinny jeans. It's so nice. It's freeing. It's so freeing. It's a nice store. It's a real neighborhood store. It's one of those stores where the baby is always right. It's one of those places where it's always baby's day out. Okay? It's one of those places where, where's my baby? Where's my baby? Don't touch my baby! It's a She's in the teepee in the back. She's fine. Don't worry about her. But it's nice. And my boss is always doing extra things to make it more appealing for the customer. Like recently, she hired an artist to come in and do silhouettes of their children. Get your son or daughter's profile. Remember them like that. And that's all fine and good. But to me, it feels a little weird. It feels just like the parent wants to see what their kid would look like as a ghost. You know? Like, it's like, oh, there's little Tessa. That's what she would look like if she was just a memory of a girl, <laughs> Just a whisper of a dream. <laughs> God, I wish you were dead, huh? <laughs> I think they love their kids, I think so. Uh, I didn't move here by myself, I came with my boyfriend. It was nice, I haven't had to do dating in New York. I pity all of you, that's so hard. Uh, I'm not a very sexual person. Um, that's sexual for those of you who are not bilingual. I'm here to help. Uh, I don't blame myself necessarily, I blame my heritage. I just think there's some nationalities that are better at flirting and all that stuff, you know, like Italians are sultry, Spanish are spicy, uh, French are just straight up sluts, we all know that. Uh, I'm mostly Irish, with just like a little bit of German. So the best you can expect from me on a first date is just a stern but efficient hand job <laughs> as I cry and sing ta -ra -la -ra -la -ra. And at the end, I just go, toss me. And you come, you for sure come. Uh, and then I just give you a baked potato. I just give it to you. I call that move Angela's Ashes because I don't, I don't use any lotion. And you think of your mother like right away. It's almost immediate how, ha how quick it happens. So fast. I myself lost my virginity at 25. I know what you're thinking, so young. <laughs> Where were her parents? Literally everywhere, that's why it took so long. Uh, <laughs> everywhere. And I'm actually still with the guy I lost my virginity to. I mean, what a week it's been. I can't tell you guys. <laughs> I'm on a high. Uh, but we've been together a long time and we don't plan on getting married anytime soon. It's just not for us, we're bohemian, which is a really cool word for poor, so it's just not in the cards. But we also made a pact with one another. Um, we, we're just not gonna get married until gay couples can buy weed everywhere. It's a, it's a promise we made to each other. Thank you, sir, thank you so much. Somebody's gotta do it, you know? I hate calling him my boyfriend, too. I just hate it, because it feels so immature. We're so committed. It feels like the name you'd call somebody who's feeling you up on the bleachers behind the middle school. And it's like, we moved away from that school months ago. It's not us. Uh, so I'm trying to transition into calling him my life partner. So the other day I was shooting off a text and I was like, now's the time. And I was like, you know what? You're more than just my boyfriend. You are my teammate. You are my life partner. Before I could get out life partner, autocorrect and all of its knowledge gave me the real name to call him. So my life panther and I are doing great. <laughs> Yesterday he just brought a raccoon to my feet. It's like, how'd you even know I wanted a garbage kitty, baby? God, you're too good to me. <laughs> Treat me like a queen. <laughs> but I'm out there, I'm in the streets, guys, like we all are. And uh, cat calling, I know this has been done a lot, but I just wanna share it because I've got new information, I've solved it. Uh, ladies, get out your notepads or put it in your phone. I won't be offended because this is a hot tip 
from a hot dip. Uh, I don't know why I said that last part. That was an add-on. I probably should have just kept back here. But I ride my bike everywhere. Well, everywhere with a bike lane that's safe in Brooklyn, not in Manhattan. I'm not insane, but I ride my bike. When I ride it, safety's always a top priority for me. I've always got my helmet on, okay? But to avoid hat collars, what I've been doing now is when I get off my bike, what I do is I leave that helmet on. Say it with me now. Leave that helmet on. Leave that helmet on. All right, now leave that. Oh, it's gonna catch on, trust me. Trust me, okay? Uh, I leave it on. I go about my day. I get an iced coffee with a friend. I get some stamps at the post office. I try on some jeans. I don't know, I'm feeling crazy. I leave it on. Cause then if a guy wants to holler at me, you're gonna see this now, everyone's gonna be wearing helmets. And if a guy wants to holler at me, I say holler sometimes, if he wants to holler at me, he has to think to himself, huh, one, is this just a safety conscious woman who doesn't have time to take off the confines of society upon her head? She's got things to do and places to be? Or two, is that a special needs adult who's just wandered away from the group? Uh, <laughs> Cause then he has to decide what kind of pervert he wants to be. It's all on him. Since moving to New York, I am working on myself every day. Uh, gone to therapy like a real New Yorker. Uh, two things I am working on currently is my posture and my credit score. Uh, you can tell it comes very naturally uh, right now. Cause I'm worried if I don't do something soon about it, I'm just gonna be like a hunchback that can't lease a Nissan Altima. I'll just be like, please sir, my mom says she'll co-sign. Oh, back to ring the bells. Uh, Guys, thank you so much. I've been Marilyn. You're awesome. Tonight, we celebrate the genius and vast work of Dennis. He's the most prolific artist the world has ever known. You've seen his art everywhere, from public buses and trains to bathroom walls to the walls of galleries as this one. Privileged guest, it is my honor to introduce Dennis. Uh, thank you, Claudia. I'm honored to have my work exhibited here for the next several months. I can only hope it inspires a fraction of the emotions that I experienced when making them. Dennis will be taking questions from the audience. But first, we're going to unveil his latest piece tonight. So let's take a moment to bask in the latest... Dennis. Oh, oh my gosh, that is gorgeous. What's the name of this new masterpiece? Oh, uh, this one's called Next Door Neighbor. Well, it's just beautiful. Exquisite. Now, well, open the floor to questions from our guests. Yes, you in front. Dennis, I always wanted to know what you were thinking when you created your piece, Black Friday Shopper. Oh, uh, yes, my statement on how consumerism has devoured the holiday season. Well, it's an interesting story. I was at a JCPenney's one Thanksgiving evening. I was specifically there for a deal on 100% cotton bath towels. As I was about to obtain the last of the powder blue variety, this woman swooped in and grabbed it in her talons. That's when it came to me. Cock and balls, cock and balls. I went back to my studio and created this. Next question. Yes, you? Hello there. Uh, there have been many interpretations of your famous work, Dad's Calling. Mm-hmm. But what is the true meaning behind that piece? That was a very personal piece. Uh, it was my birthday, 2011. I get a call. I see it's my dad's number on the caller ID. A man who was probably calling to ask about my repayment of a loan for my car insurance under the guise of wishing me a happy birthday. At that moment, all I could think of was cock and balls, cock and balls. I then took to my easel and created this, and it apparently spoke to millions. Anyone else? Yes, you. Hello, sir. I just wanted to say that you and I went to the same school. Blah, blah, hi. But not at the same time. What a beautiful coincidence. Yes. Well, in my history class, I noticed an illustration on the desk I would sit at. I took a picture. Oh, yes. This one is called Watch the Clock. I was in that same history class, Mr. Duplessis's class. It was my last one of the day, and it seemed like forever for those last ten minutes till the bell rang. That time spent culminated in the illustration that poured from my soul. We have time for one more question. Yes, you, sir? Hi, Mr. Dennis. I was in the bathroom at a rest stop in Colby, Kansas, and while relieving myself at one of the urinals, I noticed artwork that looked very close to yours. Uh, tell me, uh, was I, in fact, in the presence of a Dennis? On a trip to see the Underground Salt Museum in Kansas, I stopped, as one would, to use the restroom, the nearest being in a rest stop in Colby. As I was standing at the urinal, I had a vision of what I was handling and how it had control over my life. I thought... Cock and balls, cock and balls. And without any other outlet, I pulled a pen from my pants pocket and drew my frustration out on the wall in front of me. Both my bladder and rage were then relieved. 
Now we are going to have a presentation where we'll view images of Mr. Dennis's work, and he'll be kind enough to give us commentary on each piece. Are you ready, Dennis? I'm caffeinated enough. Okay, please start the slideshow. This one's called Take Me Out, showing a longing for being able to pick who sits around you at a ball game. Uh, this is you happy? Uh, emotions were high when a neighbor confronted me about parking in front of his garage. This is finally my Uncle Donald's headstone. He was a jerk. Okay, can we just pick up the pace here? Uh, this is because of social unrest, a statement about the environment, world hunger, commercialism. Okay, I've seen enough. Excuse me, is there a problem, sir? Yeah, there's a problem. All this guy does is draw penises on everything he sees. It's not art. It's a mental defect. Sir, why even show up? No, that's okay, Claudia. Uh, sir, do you think this work is easy to create? Yeah, I do. So you can manifest the passions that it takes to produce at least one of these pieces. You draw penises and testicles on everything. That's pretty much just a mixture of lack of imagination and a propensity for making bad graffiti. I would like you all to witness the evolution of my artistry. And sir, consider yourself an inspiration for this metamorphosis. Oh my stop. Let wow, this wow, serve wow, as a reminder that no artist can be painted into a corner. I don't get it. How's it look? Looks great. Awesome. Okay, do me now. All right. This is a sex pot comedy production.